Hamid Karzai, thanks for joining me on Upfront. In August, U.S. President Donald Trump announced his plan to escalate the U.S. involvement in Afghanistan, America's longest ever war, and to send more U.S. troops to fight the Taliban. You tweeted that you strongly oppose this new U.S. strategy, that it's, quote, against the national interest of Afghanistan. How is it against the national interest of your country to have your allies sending you more troops to fight the number one threat to peace in your country, the Taliban? The Afghan people are sick and tired of war, in whatever name that may be. Uh, when we welcomed the United States in Afghanistan in 2001, the Afghan people, uh, for the first time, accepted and supported and welcomed a foreign military power in the hope that finally we'll have peace and progress and stability. And for a number of years, that was true. But when attacks increased, violence increased, uh, terrorism increased, and no clear picture was offered in fighting it, rather it was the same old thing of Afghans continuing to suffer, we are by now very tired of the daily killing of the Afghan people. But the U.S. government would say that they're sending more troops now for the same reason that they sent troops in the first place in 2001, to defeat, to fight, to beat the Taliban. The Taliban are the cause of the violence in Afghanistan, they would say, not U.S. troops. They are not, they are not anymore the only cause of violence in Afghanistan. The war itself is breeding violence in Afghanistan. Ahmed Karzai, the last time I interviewed you on this show in 2015, you said, and I quote, I wish the Afghan Taliban, who are truly from this country, would come back to their own country and would help rebuild Afghanistan and bring peace. Turns out the Taliban has returned. Today, that group controls or contests more than 40 percent of the country, the most amount of territory since it was driven from power by the U.S. in 2001. The Taliban's now carried out more than 80 attacks against innocent Afghan civilians just this year alone. I'm guessing this isn't the kind of Taliban return you were hoping for? Yes, exactly. Uh, I want the Taliban who belong to Afghanistan, who are Afghans, to come back to Afghanistan and to uh, uh, sit down with their own people and bring peace to Afghanistan and through that bring the stability to our life that we need. If 40 percent of the country are uh, in the past three years uh, uh, have fallen in the hands of the Taliban, that speaks for the failure of the U.S. strategy in Afghanistan. Uh, the U.S. failed in Afghanistan because uh, they did not target the sanctuaries. They did not go to the sanctuaries, to the sources of, 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 of uh, training and uh, nursing and financing uh, terrorism. They uh, rather went on attacking Afghan villages, Afghan homes, Afghan children. They created prisons in Afghanistan. They violated Afghan sovereignty in every imaginable way. The way they behaved in Afghanistan, the heavy-handed military behavior in Afghanistan caused the Afghan people's alienation, and that alienation is bringing about the trouble that we have. You mentioned U.S. heavy-handedness and the killing of civilians by the U.S. and the continuation of war. But what about your own leadership? You were president of Afghanistan for a decade. Uh, the ICC prosecutor, the International Criminal Court prosecutor, has just announced she's requesting an investigation into war crimes and crimes against humanity committed in Afghanistan going back to 2003. And in the ICC's 2016 report, they said they had a reasonable basis to believe yes. war crimes of torture and related ill treatment by Afghan government forces did take place. Let's be clear, that was on your watch as president of Afghanistan. Yes, 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 she is right. She is right to, to, to launch such an investigation. That is exactly why things have gone wrong in Afghanistan, violation of the lives of the Afghan people. That's exactly why I began to have differences with the United States and with their heavy-handed approach. Do you agree that there were human rights violations by Afghan security forces while you were president? Were you aware of them at the time? Definitely there were violations by the Afghan security forces, by the U.S., and by others. And that is exactly the reason that I'm asking for peace in Afghanistan. Okay, but do you take responsibility That's exactly the reason for that those I did violations not sign the bilateral as head of state with the U.S.? Do you take responsibility as head of state at that time for those violations? 
Surely, surely, very much, very much I've spoken about this before. I have issued instructions on this before. I've issued instructions to our intelligence department, or to our defense department, to our internal uh, minister of interior, repeatedly um, uh, in cabinet meetings, through written uh, instructions. How could we be so much in trouble if there were no violations? And that's exactly the pain of the Afghan people for the past 30 years, violations at the hands of our own governments and violations perpetrated by foreigners. It is this that must end. Definitely, we have to, we have to, we have to go to those routes in order to have peace in Afghanistan. So if the ICC That's prosecutor what trying to avoid. comes after you personally, you will cooperate with her. You'll be willing to be interviewed, give over evidence, etc. Of like hell, of course, absolutely welcome. And I, 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 I have been asking for this to, so that they come to Afghanistan and investigate as to what has happened in this country. Hamid Karzai, can I just clarify for the sake of our audience at home, this is obviously a big legal and political issue. When you say you welcome the ICC investigation like hell, you'll cooperate with them, you know, you'll, you'll definitely cooperate with them. Are you saying you admit to guilt in relation to war crimes that took place on your watch? You're saying they did happen? Or are you saying, yes, let's have an investigation, but you're not sure what happened? No, I'm admitting morality and an upper hand and on high ground on morality in this issue. Okay. I want those who have done it to be taken to account. Are you one of those who did it as the commander-in-chief of the Afghan those... Armed Forces, former at the time? No, no, no. I'm one of those who, who stood against it. Okay. We, we, we were, Firmly guess... and clearly and, and in writing. And that is the issue of difference between me and the United States on this issue. That is where things went wrong between us. Many human rights groups so say the, they uh, told the you at the time body on torture was going on, on as to what detention was going on, abuse was going on, and your government did nothing. That's what a lot of human rights groups would say. No, no, they're wrong. They didn't tell me. I told them. Okay. Uh, I told the Western human rights bodies as to what was going on in Afghanistan. Okay. They didn't tell me. They were hiding it. The Western press was hiding it. I told them. I raised it. I mean, there are Human Rights Watch reports from that time where they documented in 2010, 2011, what was going on. They would heavily dispute your claim on this and yes, point to their reports. Yes, exactly. These reports were there. These reports were based, based on my statements, on my, on my struggle against violation in Afghanistan uh, by, by, by the U.S. forces and their allies in here. Sure. OK. Just turning to Pakistan, uh, in August, U.S. President Trump called out Pakistan for providing safe havens uh, for terrorist organizations, including the Taliban. Your current president, Ashraf Ghani, agrees he's called Pakistan the biggest obstacle to peace. Um, last time you were on this show, you claimed that Pakistani militia forces were behind uh, terrorist attacks, quote-unquote, inside of Afghanistan. Uh, just to be clear, you disagree with Trump and Ghani on more U.S. troops, but you agree with Trump and Ghani on getting tougher with Pakistan? Yes, I do agree that we must engage more effectively with Pakistan. But President Trump's recent uh, tough stand against Pakistan is not related to extremism or terrorism or violence in Afghanistan. Here, Afghanistan is used as a pretext to put pressure on Pakistan because of uh, the larger issues that are not related to Afghanistan immediately. It is for this reason that, again, I oppose this because it uses Afghanistan in a burger game for someone else's interest. With Pakistan, we have our differences. We have our issues. Yes, a lot of violence has come to Afghanistan from Pakistan, but that is an issue that we must address directly with Pakistan, and the U.S. and others must help that issue not to use us as a pretext for a larger confrontation in this okay. region. Hamid Kaza, you told me on this show in 2015 that ISIL in Afghanistan has no ground here at all. There is no element, there is no medium for them to grow or rise or strengthen. And yet just this year, ISIL has carried out more than 20 attacks inside of Afghanistan. Afghan officials say there are more than 1,500 ISIL fighters on the ground in your country. Do you think you spoke too soon? No, no. What, what I meant there was that they are not Afghans, that they are foreign-created foreign nurtured for a foreign purpose, that they are not indigenous to us. But they clearly have support now inside of Afghanistan. They don't have any support inside Afghanistan. They are clearly funded by abroad. 
and for a purpose related to abroad. You mentioned abroad. Uh, you've accused the United States of being no, behind ISIL. Afghan people. You have said, quote, I do not differentiate at all between Daesh and America. You've said ISIL is, quote, a U.S. tool and that unmarked military helicopters are supplying ISIL in Afghanistan. Do you have even a shred of evidence for what are pretty controversial and inflammatory claims? <clears throat> the evidence is, sir, in the fact that they are there, in spite of the U.S. presence in Afghanistan to fight extremism. ISIS emerged under their watch but when Afghanistan is completely under their air surveillance. But that's evidence of no U.S. Helicopter. failure in no prosecuting the war on terror. Without that's not detection. evidence of U.S. complicity. You're claiming complicity. You're saying U.S. and mm. ISIS are working together which is a big claim. We have more than that. Look, we have suffered so much in this game that, that never a moral being will be able to deny that extremism is a tool in the hands of the United States. They did it when we were fighting the Soviets, the same tool. They're do using it in a bigger way now today. Just to be clear, are you claiming that President Donald Trump is working with ISIS in Afghanistan? Well, these are, these are inflammatory statements that you're trying to make me make. No, I'm no, not no, going to make those them. statements. You said I consider but I'm Daesh you, as an Afghan, tool. I that, do not differentiate Daesh between has, Daesh and America. Th they get unmarked military helicopters. Yes. Them. Those are your claims, not mine. They're your inflammatory yes. claims. Yes. Yes, I am saying that, but I'm not going to link President Trump to this. I mean, this is, this is uh, linking individuals. I'm talking of a system. Uh, therefore, uh, for me to link an individual is not the right thing. Okay, let me rephrase the question then. Is the Trump administration, the U.S. government, working with ISIS in Afghanistan? In my view, under the full presence, surveillance, military, political intelligence, Daesh has emerged. And for two years, the Afghan people came, cried loud of their suffering, of violations. Nothing was done. And then they dropped a bomb, the biggest non-nuclear bomb, on our people in the name of fighting Daesh. And the next day, Daesh takes the next district in Afghanistan. That proves to us that there is a hand in it. And that hand can be no one else but them in Afghanistan. If that is not the case, I will go back to my original statement to you. Let them come back to the Afghan people and say that they have failed. Then we will sit down with them okay. and redraw a map of cooperation. With the benefit of hindsight, Hamid Karzai, looking back 16 years on from 9-11 and the original intervention, do you wish the U.S. had never intervened militarily in Afghanistan after 9-11, that they'd never gone to war with the Taliban to topple Mullah Omar's government? Do you wish Afghans maybe had tried to do it on their own without U.S., without foreign involvement or support? Oh, oh, on this question of us having been able to do it on our own, of course. A million times I wish they had not come. I wish we had not been, been naive uh, uh, enough to invite them then at that time, thinking that they were uh, going to bring good to us. We, as a people, are very grateful to the help that has been given to us, which we consider help. Where our hospitals are built, where our schools are built, where our roads are built, where life has improved, we're very grateful to the American people. But you cannot tell me that I've given you money, so I have the right to bomb your house. And if I complain, don't bomb, bomb my, my house, you say, well, that's not gratefulness. We differentiate where we are helped, we are grateful. Where we are bombed, imprisoned, hurt, we are not grateful, we stand against it. Hamid Karzai, thanks for joining me on Upfront. Thank you. Good to talk to you.